Yo, the weather today is mad crazy. Like I can swear five minutes ago it was sunny and then it was raining and right now it's sunny raining. It's sunny and it's raining at the same time. But anyway, I'm a nun much so I can do a thing about that. So let's just get on with this. Ha, I did that first part and then I got distracted. So the sun set and the clouds came and yeah, so... Hooray for that. Hey guys, welcome back to my second, I mean my first and only channel. So today we're reviewing Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. So this is the ninth adaptation movie from The Great Mind of J.K. Rowling and it stars Eddie Rodman as Newt Scamander and it's set in the same universe as the Harry Potter franchise. Before we get started, I just want you guys to know that I'm one of the biggest fans of the Harry Potter franchise. Like growing up, I read all the books, I watched all the movies. Like I even had this small ass notebook where I'd write down the curses and whatever and sometimes we tend to cast them out at people when I got angry. Like stupefy! Hello Mara! Wait, wait, that's the one for opening things, right? But a cadaver! Stick to Sempra? Was that, was that even there? Whatever, you get the pictures. Up to this date, I still find myself binging all these eight movies from time to time. You can tell how exciting this was for me and I have to say, the movie didn't let me down. It was, it was fantastic. Okay, so basically we open up in 1926. This is 70 years before Harry Potter was even born. And we are following this British wizard, Newt Commander, who just got into New York. And with him is this briefcase full of amazing creatures that he kind of takes care of. Sort of like a zoologist or something. So there's an incident with Anand Marge. Anand Marge is the term that the American wizarding community use, uses to refer to the non-magic folk. But I think it's a more polite word than the other one, muggles. Because I kind of felt like muggles was sounded like niggas, right? So yeah, there's this incident to this man, Mark Jacob Kowalski, and they end up releasing some of the creatures into the city full of non wizarding community. So now they have to try and get these creatures back before anybody gets in trouble. I don't want to touch up on the plot because this will lead me into giving off spoilers, and I don't want to do that because the last time I did, I got death threats. So I'm just going to focus on the characters. I really took a liking into Nitz Commander. He's one of those. Hate to love, hate to like, unlikable, likable characters. Like I can't imagine how he, he got expelled from Hogwarts. Emotionally, I think I relate to him because he's one of those people who are good at hiding behind their feelings because this helped him do whatever he was supposed to do in this film. Onto another character I'm sure everybody likes or is going to like in this film is Jacob. He's the audience character. Like, like he's the character who's being explained to all these things that are happening and he's coming into terms, but in real sense, the writers are actually talking to us like they're trying to get the audience to know to get in pace with the movie plus it's the comic relief because this, this nun much is being brought into this wizarding community and he's trying to to absorb everything in a rational and calm kind of way but i think he was too calm for this like if it was me i'd be freaking out son my reaction wouldn't have been the same like for most of the time i felt he was too calm sure he was saying he, he thinks it was a dream but then he was so calm for most of the things that he was saying. I like how he also brought out this emotional feel to the movie. Like it got to a point that I was like, wait, am I, am I, what is this new feeling in my eye? It feels like water or something. So another character I really took a liking to was Colin Farrell. He doesn't get a lot of screen time, but when he does, he absolutely shines. And the lady was okay. What was the name again? The detective lady. Miss Goldstein, she was okay, she was relatable. Johnny Depp, he's in the movie for like 10 seconds, so I don't want to touch up too much on his character. But if you've read the books, you know there's history between Dumbledore and Grindel, and I guess he was there to build a foundation for the next sequels. Anyway, I don't want to say anything bad about this film, because my whole childhood is riding on this. But it got to a point in this film where the pacing, the pacing kind of felt off. But all in all, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them is a fantastic movie. Like you'd expect it to reference a lot to the Harry Potter franchise, but it doesn't do that. So if you haven't watched or read the HP books, you can still go in for this one and enjoy it as a movie on its own. Anyway, thank you guys for watching this video. That's all I have for you. Have you watched the movie? Have you not? Please leave a comment down below and tell me what you think. And please also smash this video with a big thumbs up for being spoiled. And if you want me to do more reviews like this on shows, movies or whatever, just leave a comment down below. The previous video is right over there. If you haven't watched it, please do that. It's kind of funny. And also don't forget to subscribe if you're not subscribed. Peace and stay warm. It's cold season.